Hey everyone, I'm Coral. Welcome back to my channel. My hands don't ever know what to do. Um, I'm here with the books that I ended up picking up in February and it is a greater stack than um, I thought it would be when I was getting my stuff for this video ready. I was like, oh, I did pretty good this month. I didn't buy too many things I didn't need and then I did. Um, mostly true crime and horror, so let's get into it. I've got a whole circus of animals on my bed today. I've got Salem. He's old and grumpy. He's acting kind of weird. He keeps trying to pick fights with the dog, but the dog doesn't really know how to play with the cats very good because the, my other two cats do not like the dog. And I've got grumpy little Fang Fang over here. She is, she is pure evil. <laughs> that little face. She looks like a little ventriloquist dummy. And of course, how? Hopefully, we don't have too many animal shenanigans today. Okay, so just randomly selecting what I have here, uh, I found a used copy of *The Devil of Nan King* by Mo Hader. This is a, I believe, a horror or a thriller novel. Um, I don't know much about this, but I know that I want to read it because it is about the Nanking Massacre or the uh, massacre at Nanking was um, this really horrible event that happened in China, um, I believe during World War One or World War Two. I think World War One, um, but it was like these uh, soldiers from Japan came and did horrible things to this small village called Nanking. And um, I believe this book is about maybe a journalist or a woman who's interested in what happened in, I mean, that, you know, that event. And I don't know much more about it. And that's okay, because I'm going to find out soon. Next here is this absolutely gorgeous book, The Mask of Falling by Samantha Shannon. This is the fourth book in her Bone Season series, which I am slowly but surely reading. Uh, I finished the second book this month, so I'm going to make it to the third next month and then hopefully the next or the month after that I'll be able to get to the mask falling. I am so glad that they decided to return to these uh, older style covers because the cover art did change like the style of maybe one or two books they did like that and then stopped and you had to get like a special edition to match the series how the series originally came out so I'm so glad that they decided to flip it back. It's like a paranormal, almost like steampunky Victorian occult series. It's really good so far. Okay, next I have kind of a uh, nonfiction medical mystery book. Uh, this is called The Family That Couldn't Sleep by DT Max. And this is a book about familial insomnia, which is this really, uh, horrifying actually medical anomaly it's like a genetic crazy thing where this gene is passed down through families and eventually the person with this gene gets to the point where they cannot sleep no matter what um or well it's less like they can't sleep at all and more like they'll they doze off sometimes but their body never gets into that state of sleep where it's like regenerative. So they're basically like waking, mocking zombies uh, until they die. Like it literally causes them to die. Uh, there is a family in Italy who have been dealing with this for like 200 years or something absolutely bananas like that. Um, it's really scary to see the videos of people who have, you know, volunteered to have their insomnia documented. It's just terrifying. It's horrible. Um, and I'd really love to read this book on it. Then I picked up this little book uh, called Ouija, The Most Dangerous Game by Stoker Hunt, which is basically just a little history book about the Ouija board. I also found this uh, true crime book called Baby Faced Butchers by Stella Sands. Man, if, if that is not the most like inflammatory title. I don't know what is, but of course this is a really horrible case where these two teens in New York, I believe, murdered this man. I think it was in Central Park, possibly. Yeah, um, they stabbed him and disemboweled, ugh, disemboweled him and I believe they like dismembered his body. 
um, these two 15 year old teens. Uh, I think part of this was so sensational because the young woman in this story or in this case came from like an affluent family and she had slowly been getting into drugs and drinking and she would like skip school and just like walk around drunk in New York all day. Uh, so it is an interesting case and I'd like to read more on it. Next, I have here Survivor by J.F. Gonzalez. I believe that this is an extreme horror novel. It sounds like it's going to be. Um, I got this off of an Etsy shop, Lantrasort Books. Um, they are fantastic. Um, what about Survivor? Uh, this is about a woman who's kidnapped and made to perform in a snuff movie. That's all I know about this. I know that this is like the book by J.F. Gonzalez. Obviously he's written others, but this is like the one. If you're gonna read his books, you should read this one kind of a thing. I don't really read extreme horror. I like probably literally have never read extreme horror unless you would maybe count The Girl Next Door as extreme horror, but I feel like that's not quite. Anyways, I'm going to try this out sometime. I think I have to uh, hype myself up a little bit for it. Okay, next I found from Thrift Books, Haunted by Dora L. Williams. This is another of those true haunting stories that I love so much. <laughs> They're just so great, even though I don't really believe in any of this stuff. Don't really think that ghosts are real. Never had anything super spooky happen to me. Uh, but I really like reading these so-called, uh, you know, true events, true true haunting, like Amityville Horror, The Haunted by Robert Curran, stuff like that. Um, and I think if I can find enough of these, I think I probably almost have enough to do a whole trope video on them. I'm so excited to be able to do that. Oh, I guess this is about um, a case, I think, in... Canada? It doesn't say here. Um, I think this takes place in Canada. I'll read it soon and let you guys know more about it. Next, I have a copy of Appointment for Murder, The Story of the Killing Dentist. The Killing Dentist by Susan Crane Bacos. Bacos. Uh, this is about a dentist with a dark side who murdered men and women and was uh, a really enigmatic, charismatic, pillar of this pillar of society. I also hunted down a copy of Walkers by Graham Masterton. Never read any of Graham Masterton's books. Um, I believe I have, I, th I think this is the second of his that I own, um, but this one I really do plan on getting to eventually because I'd love to do a trope video on asylum horror, which I believe this is. Um, let's see, I'm gonna read you the synopsis. This says, when Jack Reed first sees the oaks, he is captivated by the old building's imposing silhouette. Here is the perfect foundation for his dreams. The former sanitarium will become the Merrick Court Country Club, John T. Reed Jr. proprietor. But the ornately carved, screaming faces that cover the walls of the oaks conceal black terror, a terror Jack Reed must stand against alone. The inmates who once filled the padded cells of the Oaks were the criminally insane, the dangerously mad. Quintus Miller, a mad genius, discovered a way to liberate himself and his fellow prisoners to set them loose upon an unsuspecting populace. During ancient druid rituals, Quintus opened a gateway to the occult maze formed by the asylum's walls. The madman had merely to thread the maze moving effortlessly through stone and brick, metal and concrete to attain their freedom. But a dedicated priest thwarted Quintus's plans and the rampaging inmates were trapped literally inside the walls of the Oaks. 60 years later, they are imprisoned still, madder than ever and more determined to destroy. Jack Reed is the key to their trap. I was really super excited to be able to get a hardcover copy of this, um, in fact, I expected that it was not a hardcover when I bought it. I think I got this from Abe Books, um, you know, a seller on, on there, but it was a hardcover and it's in pretty darn good condition. So excited about this find. Let's see creepy little Salem back there, his little creepy eyes. Sorry, I had to change my battery. So like I'm kind of off stride right here. What is next? 
Next, actually, is Consent, a memoir of unwanted attention by Donna Fritas. Uh, this is a memoir, obviously, about the author Donna, who uh, was stalked for years by a professor and um, she was kind of like an advocate for like women's rights with you know as far as it comes to consent and sex on college campuses and yeah I can't remember where I heard about this but I am so excited to read something in this vein that is written by a survivor of a crime like this. Next year is this book that I don't know where I heard um, about it. I don't know where I heard about this from. I have no idea. It was just like on my thrift books wish list and then I saw I could, you know, it was there and it was cheap. And I was like, what the heck, why not? Um, but afterwards, I after receiving it, I found out that this is a thriller. Um, this is Something in the Water by Katherine Stedman, by the way. I don't know if I said that. Um, and apparently it's a Reese's Book Club pick. Uh, this is about a couple on their honeymoon who are scuba diving and find something and I don't know what. I stopped reading the synopsis after I got to that part because I just don't want to know. I would like to read this and find out for myself organically. Um, it says it's a great psychological thriller. I'm, I'm gonna read it someday. Next is His Favorites by Kate Wahlberg. Um, oh, sorry, Walbert. Oh my god, Walberg. Kate Walbert. Um, this is a really tiny little book. I love these um, novellas that are hardcover in this size. Um, I think I have another one that's probably a very similar shape and size. Uh, the Grown Up by Gillian Flynn and I just like love it so much. This is a fictional book, I believe. I don't believe that this is nonfiction. I don't believe that this is about the author, but uh, this is about a high school student, I think, who uh, has an accident with her friends. One of her friends dies. She gets sent to this like elite boarding school um, in the wake of this tragedy and starts a relationship with one of her teachers. This sounds maybe like My Dark Vanessa, uh, but shorter, obviously. Don't ask me why I want to read books like this. I just do. <laughs> Don't judge me. We're not here to judge. So this is also kind of like Consent, where this is a book about a horrible crime, a horrible tragedy. This is Strange Piece of Paradise by Terry Jens. And um, Terry was involved in this crazy accident. Her and her friend were camping in the desert and a truck ran over their tent with them in it and then proceeded to attack them with an ax. So brutal, just absolutely crazy. Um, both of the women survived, but Terry's friend has like um, amnesia surrounding the attack. And for many, many years, this was not solved. Um, it went unsolved and I think Terry herself got to the bottom of it. Um, I'd really like to read this. It is a hefty book, like um, over 500 pages and it feels like a five pound book in my hands. You know what? It's just, just a kind of resilience I'm not sure that I would have if I were in a situation like that. Like to go through this horrible tragedy, um, survive it initially, have to go through the trauma of healing from it emotionally and physically, like maybe emotionally you might never, maybe even physically you might never really heal from it. And then to have the resilience to then, when there aren't answers, to go find the answers yourself. Ugh, absolutely breathtakingly strong. Strong, strong women. Okay, uh, this one, I don't really have a synopsis for this. This is Van Fieri by Brian Lumley. It's the second of his Necroscope books, which is why I don't really, like I didn't even want to read the synopsis because I don't have the first one and I don't really know what the first one's about. I just know that, you know, people always talk about these and they really do have fantastic covers. This one I got, I believe from Joyland Books on Etsy. Yes, um, they are fantastic as well for um, vintage horror. Um, I was also able to find a used copy of Pressure by Brian Keane. Um, and this is like, it seems like it's gonna be kind of an eco horror book. Like something happens to the earth 
and it happens underwater uh so there are people obviously as scientists and divers going down down there to investigate and they find something absolutely terrifying it kind of sounds much different than what i've read so far of brian Keane's work however i've only read two of his books so it's not like i'm an expert but i'm really excited to get to this one i love underwater horror okay last couple of books here um, I actually got on sale from Perpetual Motion Machine Publishing. They were having a 20% off sale, I think possibly at the very end of January, I think that was. So I picked up a couple of books I wanted from there. Uh, this first one is an anthology, Tales from the Crust. And you know what? I don't have super high expectations from this. Not that I think it's going to be badly edited, um, but I don't usually get along with anthologies very well. And I'm hoping that this one is just like funny and not necessarily um, trying to be spooky, you know what I mean? And then maybe like I might like it better because it's not trying to be spooky, it's just supposed to be funny. I don't know, I really don't know, but... Um, <laughs> pizza that's right motherfucking pizza monsters in pizza i also picked up bone saw by patrick lacy and really i don't know much about this book i just really love the cover the synopsis told me that this is about a small town and like some big time horror director comes um and i believe he's like filming a sequel to one of his most famous movies uh, a horror movie obviously where people are murdered and then these murders start happening that are like the murders in his first movie. That's what I think this is about from what I read in the synopsis. However, I will say like the synopsis was kind of hard to read. It has this very weird like it has this weird weird font where it's like the letters are not clear. Like it's a spooky font. You know, I just 10 out of 10 do not recommend writing your synopsis on your books with that font. Next two are actually signed by Max Booth, which was so cool. Uh, this is Touch the Night, and this is about two teenagers who are doing some like petty crimes, uh, and they are picked up, arrested, and disappear. Um, you know, they're doing crimes, or maybe they should be in trouble for doing it, obviously, because it's a crime, but they definitely didn't need to be arrested, definitely should not disappear, and their moms team up to figure out what's going on. This sounds like the perfect small town with a secret book, and I'm very excited to get my hands on this one. Okay, this one I'm super excited about as well. I mean, this is such a fantastic cover. This is The Nightly Disease, also by Max Booth, also signed. So excited. Um, the first real serious job I had, uh, like my last couple years of high school and like right out of high school was working in a hotel. I did housekeeping for a while. And then um, once I was out of high school, I started doing not the night shift, but the late shift where I'd work like 3 p.m. to 11 p.m. Um, which in some ways was not even, like, it was kind of worse than working the night-night shift because, you know, that's about the time where people start checking in and um, that's when people start partying. Oh, I have this hair in my mouth and I can't find where it is. There we go. Oh, I think that's a dog hair, not even my own hair. So I'm, uh, I'm excited to relive Stop it. I told you, my two of my cats really do not like Howl, and it's not even his fault. He's just laying here. He's been laying here like a potato the whole time, and my cat gets up on the bed, Baron. He gets up on the bed, and he hisses at Howl for not- for just existing. He's upset at Howl for existing. Is this gonna be a video where I get to show you all three of my cats? Baron is my cat who's very scared of everything. He's a scaredy boy, which is funny because he's my biggest- cat and he's the biggest baby. So in <laughs> the nightly disease. Anyways, I'm gonna read you the synopsis of this. It says, sleep is just a myth created by mattress salesmen. Isaac, a night auditor of a hotel somewhere in the surreal void of Texas, is sick and tired of his guests. When he clocks in at night, he's hoping for a nice quiet eight hours of Netflix binging and occasional masturbation. What he doesn't want to do is fetch anybody extra towels or dive face first into somebody's clogged toilet 
and he sure as hell doesn't want to get involved in some trippy owl conspiracy or dispose of any dead bodies. But hey, that's life in the hotel business. Welcome to the nightly disease. Please enjoy your stay. Um, never had to do any body disposing, but one time I got super fucking like t terrified um, because I was taking out the trash at the end of my shift and uh, I walked to a dumpster and I went to throw it in and it was really dark. Obviously, you know, it's like 1130 at night and I go to throw it in. It's the middle of the fucking winter and I noticed that there's like something dead in the dumpster but it was like I saw it out of like my peripheral vision and it's it like didn't register in my head at first when I was seeing it was just like I know this is not supposed to be here this looks like some sort of body and it, you know it, like is it alive is it dead I guess and it turned out to be like some Canadian geese that somebody must have like shot and disposed of in our dumpster because I lived in the midwest and um they probably, I don't think you're supposed to shoot Canadian geese. I think that they're a protected species of animal. Um, <laughs> so, um, I did see dead bodies, but I didn't have to dispose of them myself. Sorry, it's getting long winded now all of a sudden. I also have two, well, there was actually three, but one I already read. Um, I owned and read in the most recent Nightworms box. Um, beautiful co colors together. Um, I believe this one was called Love Games. Um, the first book here was Wisteria Cottage by Robert M. Coates. And then this was a tiny little snacky bit of horror called Tiny Nightmares, um, which is edited by Lincoln, Michelle, and Nacieli Nieto. Mm. Should have looked up the pronunciation before I did this. So if you would care for a more in-depth look, I'll leave the link to this unboxing video in my description. But that's it. Holy shit, this took me a long time to film. Thank you for sticking through it all the way. Let me know, of course, uh, if you've read any of these, I'd love to know what you thought about them. Have a fantastic end of February. I hope you, uh, you know, achieve all the things you want to achieve. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you later. Goodbye.